All right, I think we're live. Let me get the right URL here embedded in the page. Uh, the old one was not cooperating. So gotta love the technology. All right, I think we're live. Stand by the right second. URL here embedded in the page. Uh, the old one was not cooperating. So gotta love the technology. All right, I think we're live. Stand by the right second. URL here embedded in the page. Page. The old one was not, the one was not cooperating. cooperating. So, so I love the technology. All right. Technology. Take we're right. Take we're live. Take we're live. Right. 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 Take we're live. All right, I think we're there. All right, I think we're there. All right, I think we're there. I'm turn off the volume on all of this. All right, so. I think we're recording, we're fine. We're just getting feedback out of my ears, which I don't need. So uh, refresh your page to get the live stream. And then also let me know if you can hear me. I think we're going. Let me just make sure, and then let me just get some signs of life here, and then we'll move on. Um, nothing like a busted link. Um, yeah, all right, so that's working. Put that there, put that there. I think we're live. So let me just make sure that folks are here on this page and can see me. Once I can see that, then we're off to the races. Uh, I just want to get the tech going. Of course, doing this on a Sunday, I don't have my technical staff with me. And thank you all for being here. Um, I am home for a few days, which is nice. So um, go ahead and in the chat thread, let me know. Um, Put that there, and then in the chat thread, once I see some signs of life, then we're off to the races here. Cool. It looks like we're there. Another minute or so, just wait for everyone to kind of pile in, and then I'll start getting some of these questions. Okay, I got some more questions in there now. So I know people are there. I'm just trying to figure out. Give me signs of life here on this page, folks. Let me know if you can hear me. In the chat thread. All right, well, I'm just going to go because I can see it going. Um, yeah, go ahead and scrub forward if you need to. Uh, and I can see it going. So there we go. Let me just see when I see my hands here. And I'll know when I'm up to real time. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm seeing it. So I'm assuming everyone else is seeing it. And we're going to hit it from there. Um, all right, welcome. Uh, Happy New Year for those of you who I've uh, communicated with since last year. There's been uh, a lot of water under the bridge. I got uh, several film projects coming that I've been kind of prepping, if you will. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's about a 40 second delay um, in what I say and what um, y'all see. So um, that said, let me just refresh the page and make sure I'm seeing some uh, comments here. Yeah, which is kind of annoying. 
there we go. So um, I'm going to get to the questions anyways, because they will be archived here. Um, there's a number of questions that have already come in. I want to kind of jump on them um, pretty quickly uh, as we go. And um, a few of them are pretty, pretty complex. Some of them are, uh, you know, kind of run the mill. Um, and uh, um, one of which I had to kind of crack open a book for. So, you know, you guys are asking some serious questions, which is good. It's important um, that y'all are kind of in the inquiry. So uh, first question, came from Barry, who's been investigating uh, GHK uh, copper. Uh, so uh, this is a substance that's gotten a lot of research uh, kind of in the last, I don't know, few years, if you would say. Uh, and uh, the specific question for Barry was whether or not uh, some encephalitis in the optic region with some uh, nerve damage uh, could be helped with GHK. Uh, the short answer is we don't know. The longer answer is uh, it's a pretty good uh, bet that GHK with some fish oil and probably some neurofeedback and some more kind of elaborate um, brain stem techniques, brain stim, not stem, brain stimulating techniques that are coming uh, can work. I've also seen some, some optic therapy to help regenerate. Um, so if you're taking the raw building blocks with GHK, it's... It's anyone's bet, man, at this point, just because we don't know enough to know if in that particular instance it's going to do what, what we're wanting it to do. But I can tell you uh, straight up that um, there's a lot of really good research on GHK um, for all, from skin regeneration to nerve regeneration. Uh, they're using it for collagen. They're using it for wound healing. They're using it for, you know, in, in this context, blood vessel and um, nerve growth. Uh, and so there are promising pieces to this. And it's also one of the things is uh, the NF kappa B kind of inflammatory cascade conversation that happens around GHK. Very interesting stuff. I would say, um, you know, being in the shoes that you're standing in, um, I would absolutely give it a try. Um, worst case scenario, it doesn't work. I, didn't, I haven't really seen uh, too much downside on it. So um, that's all I can say at this point. I don't know, you know, in your specific uh, instance, what it is. All right, folks, I'm seeing some activity on the page. I'm still waiting for someone to let me know that um, you can hear me clearly and see me uh, well now, just so I don't feel like I'm talking into uh, an abyss. So somebody please just verify that the new feed is working and that we're here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to keep going down questions because y'all can see these afterwards. So, surely, uh, gastric bypass, uh, lots of problems, 68 years old, um, really wanting to get um, healed here, uh, putting together this excellent series of which I'm an owner. Awesome. Thank you for supporting our work. Uh, so, you know, look, if you've done the bypass, um, it really becomes uh, a function of working with transit time and working with um, carbs, slow versus fast, to see the transit time of the different carbs and what they can be doing for you and how it can potentially impact the symptoms that you're having, right? Um, so now we're talking about a, like a, a real plumbing issue, right? Like you have an issue with the pipes not being connected the same way. So the supplements can help um, the hypothyroid and fibromyalgia, all those kind of DJD arthritis fatigue. A lot of that seems to still point to an immune system dysfunction that's happening at the gut level. So, um, you know, the stomach will break things down, but you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are um, happening where molecules are probably still setting you off. So I would go on, I would consider, um, you know, a modified FODMAPS diet. I would consider um, a Cyrex um, panel to see where your specific allergies are and to avoid uh, any of the foods that are setting you off. Cyrex is uh, C-Y-R-E-X. And um, it'll, it'll, tell, it'll tell us what your body's having an immune logical reaction to. Uh, at least you can start mitigating taking those foods and then it becomes uh, a function of healing the healthy gut as, as best you can. I would look up Dr. Marvin Singh in San Diego, um, S-I-N-G-H. 
who um, I think has had some experience with this. Uh, but you know, it's you're going to have to compensate. It doesn't mean game over. It just means you're going to have to compensate for the issue at hand. And um, you know, you could live a, a relatively normal life once you find the foods that are setting you off. So I would say, don't give up. It's really important uh, to look at the transit time, slow carb versus fast carb. What is setting you off more? What's causing more inflammation? And what's you know giving you like when when do you feel your joints joints aching? What foods? what specifics, right? Now it's time for you to do some investigation. Um, I'm going to check back on my feed here just to make sure someone's saying that they can see it here. Um, okay, so people are still lost. Refresh the page, new video link. Um, so a lot of people haven't refreshed the page. Oh, let me clear the cache. There's a problem with clearing cache. Um, so, uh, as soon as folks refresh, uh, I will know, and then I'll get to, I'm going to hit another question. Um, uh, and then I'll come back because should be fine now. Okay. Oxalobacter has become extinct from someone's gut. Uh, what are the options around ha handling high ox food? Um, and I hope that low ox diet is not the only option. Well, you can reduce the oxalate issues with boiling and steaming most, most vegetables up to about 60%. Um, and um, one of the tricks that Dave Asprey uses that um, is good for that as well is calcium will bind it. And so he'll actually break a calcium supplement and just take, you know, uh, just your kind of run of the mill cal calcium, magnesium, uh, calcium citrate, doesn't matter. He'll just, as long as you get calcium in there, you break that in. Once you've boiled it, you break in a capsule of calcium uh, and it helps bind it, which will help take down the oxalic acid. That doesn't mean you can't repopulate the bacteria there. It just takes a while. So I would say do both, um, but you could at least get those foods back in your diet. So, um, okay, cool. Yay. Signs of life. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. So, all right, I'm going to keep going. Um, and I'm going to, you know, kind of run through these questions here. All right. Um, sorry, I'm going from the bottom to the top just to get the early adopt reward, the early adopters. Um, Georgina, uh, tested negative for Hashimoto's told that, uh, that doesn't mean that you don't have it. Um, yeah, so what I would say for you, Georgina, is take the Cyrex panel, C-Y-R-E-X, figure out what your body is having food allergies to, because it, just because you don't have Hashimoto's doesn't mean you don't have a bunch of other uh, symptoms that are potentially leading to that, and then a good functional medicine doctor can figure that out with you. Uh, that said, um, a lot of times when I find people having uh, HPA axis issues, uh, um, the hypothyroid, uh, pituitary, you know, the, the pituitary axis, the hypothalamus um, and the adrenals is a lot of times there will, there will be an underlying toxicity issue of a heavy metal, whether it's mercury or arsenic or something that's just throwing the whole system out of whack. And then the HP axis can't work. Um, and one of the, one of the organ systems, one of the endocrine system, uh, you know, kind of outputs is going to be compromised. So I would check blood levels and then urine challenge of mercury. Uh, and I would take a Cyrex, um, assay to see what the heck is going on uh, with the other things in your immune system and where your immune system is overworking. There is someone, someone's going to help you get to the bottom of this. You need a good functional medicine doctor who's going to chase this down. Your normal doc, your normal doctor will not do it. They will not do it. Lori, uh, would yogurt be considered fermented food? And if you have lactose intolerance, 
Would coconut be the thing? Yeah, you're talking about, you're singing my song, Lori. Uh, yes, yogurt is a ferment. Um, the lactobacillus tends to come from, you know, the, the yogurt ferments. Uh, for you know that's where that's where we derive them just as commercially available easy that way uh, that said if you are um, dairy intolerant what I would say is coconut I do the unsweetened coconut yogurt um, and uh, it has um, been great um, and my other ferments that I do are you know I've done um, successfully done uh, goat milk yogurt um, and I haven't had problems with it. Some people can tolerate it. Some people can't. Just remember the casein molecule in um, cow milk is really big. And it's really hard to digest. It's really hard to break down. Goats uh, are much closer. Camels are much closer to our physiology, uh, biology. So um, you'll have smaller molecules that most people tolerate better. Um, so you can try those as well. But coconut's your, your safest bet. Okay, I'm just going to go check my thread again. Um, make sure... Cool. Uh, we're back. Excellent. Um, I'll keep running through these. And for those of you, I'm, I'm a little low energy. I've been on a, a liquid diet for breakfast and lunch um, for eight days now um, and doing shakes uh, that are kind of resetting my liver. Um, just uh, an interesting triglyceride reset that uh, Dr. Alan Christensen is doing and I, and I took the challenge and I'm doing it with him. Uh, and so, I, you know, I could have kind of sensible meals in the evenings, but like, you know, come around 2, 3 p.m., you know, get a little lull in energy. Um, it's been great. Um, other than that, it's been great. Um, Tracy, my daughter and I suffer from frequent bladder infections, uh, antibiotics, the, the usual story. Um, does the microbiome have anything to do with bladder infections? Absolutely. We talked about that in the series. Uh, tried D-mannose, grapefruit seed extract. Um, and after reading some information, how, you know, how this can, can, you know, any of this help? Let me pull out. Look, I just got this in the mail. My 10 DVDs, my disc set, and then here the natural antibiotic and home remedies guide. Let me read from you from a resource. We got cranberry extract, we got uh, myrrh oil, we got oregano oil, D-mannose is one of them, parsley is one of them, uh, and there's very specifics on how to apply that. So, uh, you know, the long, so, you know, instead of getting into like the deepest of details here, the long story short, Tracy, is absolutely, you have to change your gut microbiome, which will then change your vaginal microbiome, which will then change the, the kind of the, the, the urinary tract microbiome, uh, kind of from top down, you want to mitigate any use of the, um, you know, sugars. Uh, and then, you know, there are, there used to be commercially available um, douches that were probiotic uh, in nature. They're off the market right now. They're reformulating. There's all studies that kind of come and go. So that isn't, um, as far as I know, commercially available right now, uh, but it's very easy to clean up your diet and start to see that go away. Uh, get out the sugar, start to see that go away and start using natural things to uh, move, move things along in the right direction. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, watch, I don't remember which episode it, it's in in the series. It's been a while since I made the thing, um, but um, you're definitely in the right neighborhood. If you are having frequent bladder infections, it is a microbiome issue. Wendy, high LDL, low saturated fat diet, coconut oil still okay to use? Depends on who you ask. This is controversial. Um, between the cardiologists and all my friends that are out there, a lot of people would say different things here. I don't think... Um, I think, you're having a pro I think you're having a problem based on your other question because you're saying if your poop floats, that's steatorrhea, right? That is having fat in your stools, which means you are not breaking down fat, which to me becomes a biliary issue, right? So you have, for me, I would look at liver and gallbladder function for you. I would look at the microbiome that is produced and um, the, the metabolome that comes out of how the biliary, bil, uh, the, the kind of the biliary secretions and what that does to the microbiome. And so there's this intense circuit 
that goes back. There's actually, a, go to, um, while we're in the free replay here, go to the bonus episode with Shane Morris. He talks about this. But there is a whole metabolome that comes out of bile acids um, in the microbiome, which then, you know, connect the dots on how you're like breaking down fat and whether or not you're able to. So again, this isn't, I'm not here to diagnose or treat. This is way out of the context of what we can do in a Q&A here. But I would look at your liver and gallbladder function. I would look at doing a liver cleanse and a gallbladder cleanse. And I would look at resetting your microbiome so that the healthy bacteria then um, start to work with your bile acids that can help you actually start breaking down the fats. Because for me, I don't think your problem is the oils that you're eating. Your problem is your body can't process oils. And that's where I would start with you. Let me just go check the thread, make sure um, everyone's here. Um, Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Um, I finally got my box yesterday. Um, you know, I was kind of one of the last in line, but you know, there's a lot of people that still haven't gotten theirs. The rest of them ship out Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and it just depends on where you live. Uh, you'll be getting them soon. So it's exciting. And, um, just FYI on that, um, my box. So there's the home fermentation guide, um, which I use all the time, the gardening guide that comes from like the gardening consultants that I hired for my own garden, which is amazing. But this sucker, um, the companion guide, actually, I wrote the entire action plan myself. And then I went through every single transcript and wrote the summaries and the kind of key points. And then I had my team just do the research on some of the like, okay, give me the Atkins diet, tell me this, tell me that. And, we, and I basically put together and compiled this entire thing myself. Um, it's comprehensive. It's good. I, I feel really good about it. Put it back in the box. My kids have gotten into the box and we're about to color in it. I was like, can I just have it for a minute? Um, okay, running back um, to the questions here. There's a bunch, so I want to get to as many as I can. And sorry, my voice is a little raspy. Um, we we're actually at a basketball game the other night, so we were screaming. It was fun. Mm. Hep C, pancreatitis, Hep C. Yeah, so I just did, let me see if I can dig this up. Uh, where would I do this? I'm gonna dig up some a, a show for you to watch. Uh, bop, 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 bop. My channel, um, I just did an interview with Alan Christensen. It'll explain kind of what I'm doing here. Um, watch this afterwards, obviously, Don. Um, the, the core issue is, okay, so you have a compromised pancreas. Um, that's hard to come back from with some of the, the hit that you've taken 25 years of hep C is no joke, right? Uh, but we're starting to realize based on some of this research that Alan and, the, and a number of my colleagues are, are um, referencing here that the liver does a lot more than we thought when it comes to um, diabetes and when it comes to energy metabolism, we knew it, but we didn't know how much it was, right? So the liver has to store energy in the form of glycogen. And when it gets overwhelmed, it starts storing it in the form of triglycerides, which then wraps around your organs and becomes you know, organ fat and becomes a whole other issue. So um, your desire for strong carbs or for simple carbs beat your strong desire for simple carbs becomes an issue because A, you're feeding the bacteria that, that like that, that tend, the bacteria that like the simple carbs are the ones that are pro-inflammatory that would also lead to further pancreatitis. So for you, it becomes resistant starch, it becomes slow, slow, slow carbs and working to really allow for a, a healthier, slower transit microbiome to exist. And when you do so, then it really starts to kind of show in your symptoms and, you know, kind of the sequelae that comes from it. Listen to the podcast, the YouTube video that I just posted there, uh, and then really start looking at shifting to those slow carbs. And I would even take, and this is a question I saw for some, from someone earlier, is I like to take my resistant starch and my slow carbs and then take a probiotic and then wait a couple hours and take another probiotic and then allow the different kind of transit time and the different entry points of the probiotic 
to hit depending on where we're at in the kind of breakdown cycle uh, and give my body you know the greatest amount of input because remember this and we talk about this a lot in series um but it's important point that i need to drive home here is you know everyone's like oh i'm going to take this probiotic and then it says six thousand you know or six billion you know cfu of this thing and so i'm dumping all these things into my gut that are then going to live there that's not how that works um the lifespan of your average bacteria is 12 hours, right? So at best it's passing through and making babies. So what you're really doing is it's a DNA war between the bacteria that are there now and the bacteria that you're introducing subtly. And what happens is the bacteria that are there now secrete a biofilm to basically create real estate for themselves and not let any other bacteria or, or, or bacterial DNA come in. And so what's happening is you're putting all these good guys in with the express intent to allow them to have children to then start to beat back and create their own biofilm and start to beat back these aberrant colonies of bacteria. And so it becomes this kind of like force field war, right? It's like the gangs of New York, if you will. They're all just kind of battling for turf. Um, and so, a part of a successful strategy there needs to be choking out or taking away the foods that let the bad bacteria thrive so that they, their colonies start to collapse because they don't have the food they need to eat. And then as you introduce the good guys with the slower carbs, you start to create these kind of beachheads for them to kind of root down and then start doing what they need to do within your ecosystem. So it's, it's an important thing to understand as we talk about all this is the slow transit of resistant starch and the bacteria that feed those make a really big difference. And we've got to keep our eyes on that price. I'm going to keep my, uh, my whistle wet here. Um, Simona graves in 2013, Bunch of stuff happened with the thyroid. One year later, no food intolerance on the IgG. Normal TSH, but TPO and TG, TG antibodies um, after birth. Then uh, more than after birth. I, first, I'd like to know, Simona, what tests you took for the IgG. Take a better test if you need to. Take the, uh, the Zoomer test, the wheat Zoomer test, um, and then also take the Cyrex panel. Make sure there's no underlying food allergies that are there. Um, in general, when someone shows me this, I immediately pull them off gluten anyways. So pull off gluten and see if those numbers come down, then you have your smoking gun. Um, I, you know, I would say you need to go to the work of Isabella Wentz um, and read her books um, all the way through uh, and work with a functional medicine doctor who knows what they're doing. There's something still going on in there. You need to go find the smoking gun um, because the trigger, the, there's some trigger that we're not picking up. And I would say you got to keep digging for that trigger. Jackie, uh, best time to take probiotics, water, baking soda, food with prebiotics. Look, I like to take probiotics, like I said earlier, um, with a kind of mixed strategy, which is I'll take them on an empty stomach in the morning. Um, I will take them after I take resistant starch. Um, I will take them with food. I'm taking probiotics. I'm eating probiotic food, obviously. I'm eating fermented food with every meal. Um, and I'm taking a, a prebiotic like resistant starch um, and a, um, prebiotin, which is a great product, um, get on Amazon. Um, I'll scoop that in and then I'll, I'll drop that in and take more probiotics because again, it goes back to what I was saying with Dawn here, is you want your biofilm for the good guys to win. So once you take the prebiotic fibers, once you take the, the, the kind of slow vegetables that you know the bacteria love, then give the bacteria, right? Let them come in unison uh, and then see how you feel. Some people, you know, um, and, and here's the problem. The research isn't clear yet. We know probiotics help. We do not understand um, what you're asking yet. I will hedge my bet and do it all. 
Um, but I find personally that I tend to do better and feel better when I'm taking the prebiotics or the, 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 the start, the resistant starches, the slow carbs and the prebiotics with the probiotics. And if you're taking like with food, when you say when you're taking with food, if you're taking it with like a big like pot roast or something, that's when you want to take hydrochloric acid. When you're taking like heavy protein, take some hydrochloric acid, take some protease, take some digestive enzymes, help break that down, then drop in the probiotics. Because uh, sometimes what happens is the lag time in our digestion for a lot of the kind of big heavier proteins for a lot of people uh, is just there. What turns out is they start to rot, right? And as they start to rot, we got all kinds of issues. Um, and those issues lead us to um, aberrant bacterial growth, right? So you take the enzymes, especially with the big heavy meals, uh, and then take the probiotics with the fibers to help them thrive. Charlotte, I uh, just took my first recommendations from Biome. So excited to see what changes. Number of active microbes at 1%. Praying that number will change quickly. Yep. Um, you know what? Let, you know, the next step is to step in that direction and keep stepping, right? About 1%, the good news is it's all up from there, right? So, you know, get that to 2% and you've doubled your output, right? And you keep going. And you will probably feel better than most because you have that much more ground to like kind of make up and it'll, you'll start making it up pretty quickly. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, I don't think it's part of our free replay weekend, but the video in the bonus videos uh, for any of the packages, I think, um, is my interview with uh, Helen Messier. Um, very, very uh, enlightening for me to realize what the heck they could see, but the, you know, the biome test can see in the gut. And I was just eating too much meat. And, um, you know, I slowed that down and things fixed. And so there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of interventions you can do that will move the needle quickly. So I'm curious to see that. I'm uh, just going to check, make sure the feed's okay. We don't have any technical difficulties. Great. Um, cool. Um, eczema, Aubrey. Um, yeah, I read this earlier. You went to a dermatologist. You're still the, derm the term dermatologist was an asshole who basically, you know, patted you on the head and said, good luck. You tried everything. Uh, hungry for sweets often. Dried fruit, cacao nibs. Yeah. Um, most of your stuff is gluten free. Um, based on reading what you uh, have been writing here, you're still, you're still taking on too many carbs. You're still taking on too many fast carbs. Um, and you need to break your addiction to the carbs, which I think are still um, feeding the aberrant bacteria, Aubrey, that are not there to help. So, you know, my mother-in-law has the same problem, you know, just, you know, card carrying, gluten-free, everything, um, but, you know, just can't get away from the, the starches and the carbs and the bread and still has all kinds of gut problems that, you know, um, she just won't let it go. Um, I highly recommend um, what, what I'm doing right now. It's hard as hell, frankly, but um, the results are there. You see, listen to this podcast I did with Alan Christensen. Um, you need to slow down the transit time. You need to pull the carbs that carbs out. Um, I would also, um, also, so two, two things I always do for, for patients that, that complain about stuff like this is you have to look at toxicity. So check for mercury, check for heavy metals, Get a good functional medicine doctor to do it. I had um, Mark Hyman, who doesn't see patients, but is a good friend of mine. I had him run all my stuff. I, I'm going back and forth in chelating uh, mercury out of my system with DMSA because I had amalgam years ago that were taken out, but I think they were taken out inappropriately. Um, and so it's tough. It's hard, right? You got to get that crap out of your system. Um, but it makes a huge difference. So if you end up having heavy metal toxicity and some issues, upstream, it's always going to cause issues with your microbiome. Uh, so you've got to take that out of your system. Uh, but then also, and, I, and check for an email from me, I did an interview with um, Dan Pompa, maybe like a month ago or something. Um, he, he spoke very, he, you know, he spoke very clearly about why that that's a problem. Uh, and if that isn't a problem, lucky you. Now you just got to break your addiction to some of these carbs. I don't care if it's gluten free. Um, you still have to take some of these foods out of your diet and move to much more nuts and seeds and proteins. Uh, and you will uh, then have to re not keep 
re-inoculating with fermented foods. Um, you'll have about a two to three week kind of bumpy ride, and then you should be on the other side and the eczema should start clearing in my experience, right? Again, not all results are whatever, you know, we're not diagnosing or treating, but I've seen this a lot of times. Get that heavy metals out, check for any toxins that are impeding your system, get off the carbs. You got to get off the carbs, move to only slow carbs, which are, you know, fruits and vegetables that work, you know, low glycemic vegetables, arugula, artichoke, asparagus, bean sprouts, uh, beet greens, bell peppers. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them uh, in your uh, companion guides and stuff like that. But, you know, low glycemic vegetables, cut out your starches, cut out your breads, cut out your rice um, and check for any heavy metals um, and you'll be on your way in my, in my assessment. Right. Um, and we'll go from there. Garth, stress, significant effect on the microbiome. Oh yeah, you betcha. Chronic stress is particularly damaging in connection to adverse childhood experiences. This seems to be a key driver in gut dysbiosis. What are your thoughts on healing developmental trauma and effects on its microbiome? I actually just did. Oh, I don't know if this thing's available. Um, let me go see. Hold on. I might actually have all my thoughts encapsulated in something that could be of help to you. Uh, let me look it up. Let me look it up. So I had um, so many people in our world that were being held up by emotional trauma that were just unable. Here's a webinar that I brought an expert in for. Where the heck is this page? There you go. Um, I brought an expert. So one of my mentors, PhD, he was just a super doctor in psychology and emotional trauma. I had him come in and do a lecture series for my, my students in my Urban Monk Academy because so many people know what they should do and don't do it because that, that the pain is too heavy. Uh, so many people have so much stress on their system that they have a dysbiotic environment to begin with because they're just living under fight or flight and under duress. Uh, that's why I've been teaching meditation for years. If you look at the studies, uh, NF kappa B, we can talk about this with Dr. Tom for a while. Meditation and mindfulness basically block the molecules, uh, the gene expression, if you will, for inflammatory cascades that set the whole body on fire. Learning how to calm your mind is not an option. Learning how to heal from adverse childhood experiences is not an option. If you're carrying yesterday into today, tomorrow is going to look like yesterday all the time. So uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, I couldn't agree more. Um, I am going to be bringing more and more experts uh, for you guys in that vertical because um, it's an epidemic and it's getting worse because everyone's brushing it under the rug, but you have to go back and resolve it. Now, that said, do you have to spend eight years in Freudian therapy, like losing all your money talking to someone? No, uh, this individual, this gentleman that I brought uh, for this lecture um, has amazing results using all kinds of cool, new, innovative techniques and ancient kind of remedies from shamans and, and you know, Chinese medicine, things that we know work. Um, to really bring up the resilience of the system and bring down the stress. So I think that there are um, a lot of avenues there uh, and you should leave no stone unturned and the microbiome is absolutely affected uh, in a negative way by emotional trauma, stress, um, and you know time compression in the world we live in, right? It just sucks. So yeah. Um, like Garth, I want to hear more about healing developmental trauma. Adopted children went through onslaught of medical interventions, prematurity, physical, emotional trauma. They're young adults now, one with autism, my, uh, meiotic dystrophy. Despite whole foods diets, they're both having gut issues. Can microbiomes uh, from severely stressed so early be healed um, at this stage of the game? Uh, great question, Gail. Um, Here's a challenge is it's a chicken and egg issue. Um, one, we know that kids that have early developmental issues and have autism and, and are on the spectrum tend to already have compromised microbiome. Uh, but then people who have 
emotional trauma and stress and all the issues that are there um, partially come from the autism, but partially cause the dysbiosis, which leads more towards the autism and the spectrum and all the issues that we're having. So it's what sits in the middle is the microbiome. And we know this in, we know this for a fact that, that these kids tend to have more dysbiosis. So healing with whole foods, absolutely. Uh, Re-inoculating, having fermented foods, absolutely. But I would get these kids into an environment that's safe, that is healing. I would do energy healing. I would do Reiki. I would, I would wave a chicken over their heads if I knew it worked, right, Gail? Here's the thing is you need to bring their system from sympathetic overdrive, that fight or flight, back to rest and digest or parasympathetic. We know that mind-body practices bring down NF-kappa B expression. We know that they will help with this. And we know that the fundamentals of these mind-body practices um, across the board help everything. So I would definitely go watch this. Um, I'll put in yours just in case you're you know, um, in a different universe or something and not seeing this. Uh, now, but I'll just put that as a response to you. Watch this webinar, get them uh, into some sort of Tai Chi, Kitty Yoga, whatever it is. Uh, keep healing on the emotional level, the psychological level, and keep healing the microbiome. Bringing those things together is where I've seen the best results. Lisa, my, my husband has a rare autoimmune disorder that doesn't uh, respond to gluten and dairy being taken out. Um, autoimmune enteropathy. Uh, do you know of any research that's been going on that investigates why the gut doesn't seem to respond to these measures? Do you think uh, stem cell uh, therapy might be an option? Look, I think stem cell therapy might be an option for a lot of things. I think stem cells are very promising. I think that postbiotic microbiome research looking at the metabolome is very promising. Um, and I also think that phages and the, the study of using viruses to inject DNA to help support some of these things um, is also incredibly promising. Um, look, there's a lot coming. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to avoid dairy and gluten for your husband. I would look at any other triggers that are there. I would also look at toxicity, Lisa, kind of what I've been saying here is, you know, and I think, I think Dan Pompa has a really good uh, metaphor for this is a lot of people have, they love this body water lake and they're like, oh, look, dead fish. That's a problem, right? And so you start putting in new fish, probiotics, and then those fish die. And so the question is what's happening in the water, right? So what is the soup that is creating an environment for these fish to die? So if you swim upstream, uh, there might be a coal plant, a power plant, or whatever in his example, right? So is there mercury toxicity? Is there a mold toxicity? Is there arsenic? Look at all the heavy metals. Look at all the issues that could be creating a polluted body of water. Fix that. Gluten and dairy, keep them out. Re-inoculate the microbiome. Really start to you know eat the slow burn vegetables and the fermented foods and all things that you learn from the series. Um, and then start looking, yeah, absolutely. At what, you know, what's left? Is it still that hot? Is, are the markers coming down? Look at, um, the, uh, recent stuff in stem cells. It's just not there yet. Right. But it's getting there. Uh, there are a lot of things coming, but clean up everything you can. And I promise you, uh, I can't promise you this, but my bet is that within the next 10 years, we're going to have an answer to that. So just clean up his act and basically bring down all the inflammatory markers that you can, including get them into meditation. Go, go to the urbanmonk.com. I get all these meditations and stuff, right? Get him into meditations, Tai Chi, Qigong, all of the things that, that suppress this NF kappa B cycle that would then lead to lower uh, cytokine activity, lower inflammation, you would be surprised how often that alone nips a lot of this stuff in the butt, right? And then just hang in there, right? Get them as healthy as you can and hang in there. Um, Nola, look, if you are okay with carbs and you are doing um, okay just in terms of like your microbiome and your metabolome and gluten is your only thing, gluten-free bread's fine. Um, it's still a kind of a manufactured product, if you will. And I think that the gold standard for that needs to be 
how much bread do we actually need, right? Um, and so look at it. If it doesn't, if it doesn't bother you, fine, take it. Just, you know, uh, it's okay to have carbs from bread that is gluten-free if you could take it, right? If you're overweight, maybe it's not for you, right? And so the answer is very specific. So I don't like giving specific answers um, uh, that, to people because everyone will take that in general terms. I would get a biome test and I would see if it's good for me, right? Personally, right? There is no one size fits all anymore. Those days are over. In episode two, leaky gut test was mentioned. What was the test? God, I don't really remember. Um, there's a transit test that Dr. Tom talked about. It's in the transcripts. So I would look in there. I, pro I promise I, I, if I remember to tell you, I don't know the, the actual test right now, Catherine. Um, blood tests show high CRP. I had food poisoning about seven years ago. After that, I could eat everything. I couldn't eat everything I used to eat. Diagnosed with SIBO. Want to heal my gut, but can't do the fermented, you probably can't do the high histamine foods. Um, can't eat many vegetables like um, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, um, have to cook all the vegetables. That's fine. So you probably have your oxalate um, producers that got wiped out. Um, there are the Chantilix, Chantilix, oh, let me look this up. Let me see if I can find the name for this thing. I'll look it up. There's there's a product uh, Dr. Ken Brown makes. Um, let me see. Let me Google that. Um, Ken Brown, SIBO, he's got a, a product from some bark that they have uh, that shows very good efficacy with SIBO. Here, I'll put this in here. Check him out. He's a good dude. He was in the series. Um, I thought he had a lot of value to add and he's, he's you know, evidence-based. So I would check that out. That's where I would start. Um, but look, you can't have the ferments with what you got. I get it. Um, what I would do is really look at low histamine. Um, low histamine foods, digestive enzymes, start to bring back the, the oxalobacters. Uh, and then look like, so, I ended up, so I've done a lot of third world travel um, that, you know, um, you take a hit, right? So I went to Hyman and he's like, dude, you've got parasites. I'm like, what? Right. And so I ended up having to take an aggressive kind of antifungal, antiparasitic for a month, wiped it out. It was gone. Right. So your food poisoning might have left something that I think, uh, don't leave that stone unturned. Go do, um, and uh, I mentioned them all in the feeding guide, I think. So I don't rely on my memory. Um, so we actually had um, in the uh, companion guide here, let me see if I can find it. If it's going to take a second. Um, sleep and rest. There's tests. There's tests to do for all this stuff. I think I put in all the labs that you do there. Um, it's in here somewhere, but look at that. Um, and there's a number of tests that we included that you should look at for the gut. I just can't remember the name of the company. I want to say it's, it's not Great Smokies Labs. It's not Diagnostics. Genova. I think it's the Genova stool test um, that I did with, with Hyman. Let me see if it's on this document here. Nope. So I think it was the Genova stool test and man, they found all kinds of stuff. Um, I've been to India, I've been to South America, I've been to Asia. I mean, I've been all over the place. You pick up hitchhikers. So wipe them out, re-inoculate. It's your best bet. Aubrey, thank you so much for the tips. We'll get those fast cards replaced with slow, just source the functional medicine doctor in my area, make an appointment. Awesome. And Lisa, you are very welcome as well. Um, I'm happy to be of service. I'm happy to be home. Uh, let me uh, refresh here because I've uh, um, hit it there. Yeah. So um, any last questions here? I have, um, it's, it's a Sunday. You all have um, episodes to watch if you haven't watched them already. If you haven't gotten the series, please do so. It supports our work, which is important because keeps us doing what we do here. Um, and yeah, and so we're actually, um, since I last communicated with you all, um, 
we are, uh, I'm relocating my family to Park City, Utah, um, up the mountains, um, skiing, hiking, rafting, doing all things that are better for my kids. I looked at like this, I live in Southern California, um, you know, kind of far away from LA. We moved an hour south of LA just because of the smog and, you know, all that. It's just still, it's just so damn toxic. The air that you can't get away from, the traffic, the, you know, the kids and their devices and all that, that I had to take kind of a bold step and be like, I got to get my kids out of this crap and I got to get them in a place where they're going to thrive as young humans that have, you know, less stacked against them, right? They still have, you know, the social pressures and all that, but less lead, less mercury, less crap that's hitting them. And even with that, like, so Park City, great lifestyle, old mining town. So we have this really expensive kind of water filtration system that like has to get all that crap out of the water before it comes into your house. This is the world we live in. So, you know, you either roll over and die or you can say, okay, well, I just, you know, I got to, I got to juke, I got to move, I got to move quickly to uh, adjust for that. And in doing so, I will have uh, better chances for my kids to not develop issues down the line or get their microbiome wiped out. Like this is conscious parenting 101 is you want to protect your babies and then you want to give them the best fighting chance that they can get. Right. So I'm going to refresh here. Uh, I'll hang for another couple minutes. If anyone has last minute questions here. Oh, nice. Great. So yeah, I mean, that's, um, you know, I've lived in California my whole life uh, and it's just, there's, 10 million people within, you know, 50 miles of me. And, you know, they all have gas exhaust and they all just dump their stuff into, you know, the waterways and all that. And so it's just not, it's not great. Okay. I got a couple more questions here. Uh, wouldn't organic wheat be safe to eat since it wouldn't have glyphosate? Uh, Holly, that question is case dependent, right? So if you have issues with your gut lining, wheat is going to harm it either way because it's not just the glyphosate, it is the wheat. So Yes, glyphosate sucks, but wheat has also demonstrated that uh, the gluten in the wheat is demonstrated that's going to tear your gut lining every time. So if you don't have issues with that, yeah, sure, you could probably get away with some wheat, right? Um, but if you do have issues with that, then the answer is no, with or without the glyphosate. So you just got to figure out where you're at, where your specific allergies are at, where your symptoms are at, and then you decide whether you can actually ingest wheat. Um, but it is, it's taking a hit, right? Um, Sometimes it's fine, right? Um, I, I ate wheat when I was in um, Italy. Um, and for the most part, I was fine. I was a little more inflamed, but I wasn't like, you know, on fire because, you know, they didn't sell their, they didn't sell their food system to the devil like we did, right? And so, yes, you can get away with some of that. Um, but if you have gluten issues, you're still going to have issues with wheat. Uh, if you have leaky gut, Bethany, if you have leaky gut absorption issues or being prescribed oral supplements, um, how hard and how long is it going to be uh, for those to work with you? Would injections be better? Great question. <sighs> it depends. I'll start by saying that, you know, I, I hate being that guy, but it depends. Um, having IV vitamins will definitely help your body. Fixing your gut and your absorption uh, for the oral supplements will help. Um, giving yourself um, probio uh, probiotics helps, sure, but proteolytic enzymes help. Having digestive enzymes help. Um, you know, I would say it's still worth taking, unless you're seeing like whole pills in your poop. Um, it's still worth taking, but the you know the race to the top of this hill here, Bethany, is to get yourself. Um, healed in the gut as quickly as possible, whether it's with colostrum, whether it's with cabbage juice, whether it's with, you know, glutamic acid, uh, you know, L-glutamine supplements, all the things that we talk about in the series, fix that and then keep taking your supplements. But I would say, you know what, you're probably better off, unless you're seeing undigested pills, you're probably better off just taking your supplements and you're going to be okay. Um, unless you have very, very bad leaky, I mean, to the point where your intestinal dysbiosis is you're creating like allergies to everything, right? Um, again, gold standard, take a weak Zoomer test, take a Cyrex test, take a, um, a Viome test, take all these tests, figure out what's going on, and then come up with a strategy that makes sense for you, right? 
Uh, Joanne, any specific info for multiple sclerosis? Look, we know that it is an autoimmune issue that is also triggered by this kind of microbiome inflammatory leaky gut issue. So it's all over the series. So look at the series. Um, what episode is autoimmunity? I think it's somewhere in here. Uh, immunity, episode seven. Look at episode seven. Uh, and there's a ton coming out on multiple sclerosis right now in regards to the microbiome, in regards to what you can do about it. So um, there's a lot of specific info there. You know, so look at episode seven and go from there and it keeps going, right? Um, how can you lower a CRP? Fix your diet straight up, right? Fix your diet, fix your carb intake. Um, then look at all the plaque. One of the things that I've seen with CRP is kind of weird. I'm, I'm actually doing a whole series on this this year is on oral health is there are a lot of things happening in the mouth that are causing some of our issues with our microbiome and our inflammation. Think about this, this way is, you know, leaky gut, you eat the thing, it goes down and if it crosses the barrier, it goes to your bloodstream. If you have bleeding gums, if you have gum issues, it goes straight to your blood. If you have your, your dental tubules, go straight to your blood. So a lot of the things that you wanna do is go to a holistic dentist and just make sure that you don't have issues in the mouth that are leading to, to your CRP issues, and then look at your diet and bring that down. Diet, 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 you know, that's where we start with everything, right? Uh, since I read about wheat's ability to open the gut barrier through the zonulin release, isn't tall wheat not great for you? Yeah, I mean, tall wheat, any wheat, Lisa, any wheat, not great for you, right? And so that's the issue is we know that it's not great for you. Look, if you look at, it's hard, right? Like you look at like, okay, go into a field and look at some wheat and be like, oh yeah, I could eat that, right? Like it's not, it's not what we eat, right? As animals, you don't go like, oh, I'm going to get that. So we learn how to get that and grind that and turn it into a flower and turn it into this other thing to be able to take it. But if you look at the, not just the zonule, if you look at all of the substances that surround a seed of grass that are designed to tell that to, to be poison for the animal, right? Say, so don't eat me. My intended use is to be blown in the wind and pollinate and all this other kind of stuff. Um, so the plant has gone through a lot of effort to say, no, don't eat me. Yet we're like, oh, there's some nutrients in there. So we take it and we pulverize it and we take what we can and we bake it. We you know, turn it into dough. We turn it into pizza, whatever the heck, and we eat it. Um, not it. Not it. It was not part of what our ancestors ate until we figure out how to eat it. And even then, there was a hit we took in eating it. So does that mean never eat it? Depends on the person, right? But if you have intestinal permeability issues, if you have leaky gut, if you have any autoimmunity, the answer is no, man. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's just not, it's not going to be a good move for you. Okay, we're uh, wrapping up here. I'm going to take the last couple of minutes and just say thank you all. Um, this is our last chance to share the um, the weekend with our friends and family. So if you have people in your life that um, need to be hearing about this, just share you know share it. Hit the buttons. There's let me see if this face even the Facebook button right above uh, this chat thread. Uh, Twitter, Pinterest, just hit that and say, hey, folks, last chance, watch this thing. Help me get the word out there. I, you know, this thing's going away. So if you haven't purchased it, um, watch as much as you can tonight. Ideally, purchase it because that's how we eat. That's how we support our families in doing this. I left medicine a while ago to do what I do here so that I can help scale the message, right? Like, so let's help get it out there. Uh, we're extending the discount through tonight. And uh, we really, really, really want to get this message out as far as we can. Um, but we're also in negotiations with different networks and all that. And it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's film and TV. It's, it's complicated. So this might very well be the last chance people have to see this for free. Last one I'm taking from Bethany, and I'm not taking any more questions. Thanks for your response. I live in LA and often think of moving, uh, but work is here. I worry a lot about the toxicity in the environment. I'm a runner. Uh, keep getting slower and sluggish from the inflammation. 11 minute miles. I was nine minute racer. Uh, for, uh, I was in Florida for work for two weeks and was instantly running eight and a half miles back to LA, back to being slow. Yeah, man. Like, <sighs> You're huffing paint, right? You are you are sucking down the exhaust pipes of 10 million cars. 
And so, you know, you look at that and be like, oh, you know, my wife's like a lifestyle gal, right? She's like, oh, but we're close to our friends and all, you know, fancy restaurants and all the stuff that comes with LA. I'm like, at what cost? Generationally, at what cost are we doing this living here? We live in a very complicated time. And so we have to make very difficult decisions. Look, I'm a filmmaker, right? Like to move away from LA is like, what are you doing? But I care more about my kids than I do about my convenience. And so I'm doing this for my children and I'm kind of relocating us to a place that's going to be healthier and safer. And, you know, I'm breaking probiotics into their, their you know, drinks every day. I'm doing everything I can to, to stack them with a winning hand because the world is getting very tough for these children. And, you know, just like your 11 minute mile, what happens to their brain, right? Uh, what happens to their brain when they're compromised? It's like, you know, um, Tom O'Brien uses this example, is you are sitting there. If you were to sit there with your legs crossed and do that for three hours and then get up and run a, a marathon or run a mile, how would that look, right? You're going to be very clumsy. And so we're doing that with effectively with the glutens and the toxins and all these things in their brain, asking them to go to school, you know, with a crappy breakfast and, and you know, all the toxins on them and asking them to behave and let alone think, right? Just behave and like, you know, be, be who we want them to be at school. It's just, it's not fair to them. And so we have to move very quickly to uh, rectify that situation for the next generation. We're going to have a lot of trouble, as you know, from the series, talking about all these statistics with autism and all these other things, right? Um, and and it's, it's a big challenge, right? So, um, all right, um, I got to run. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, and I'm really uh, enthusiastic about the work that we've done. We're continuing it with a film called Biome, with a series on the um, oral health that includes oral microbiome that's happening this year. I'm doing a series uh, called Exhausted on energy and why everyone's out of energy. So we got a lot of things that we have in production this year. Uh, and I'm going to be, you know, really hitting it hard and bringing some of these interviews to you all uh, in the next, uh, you know, six to nine months. So keep an eye out for it. Again, take advantage of this series while it's still live uh, for the next, you know, few hours. And um, yeah, um, keep spreading the word. Keep taking care of yourselves. I want to hear success stories. I want to see uh, things working for you and you taking the kind of actionable advice that comes from, you know, the, the, the resources we put together for you and putting it to work in your life. Because if you don't, there's nothing there, right? You have to you have to act on it. And when you act on it and you keep doing what it takes, that's where the wins are. Thank you. Bless you.